This video is about the 2008 free response question problem number four involving particle motion. One good thing to start with is to identify what the particle is actually doing in relation to the graph of its velocity. So what I've done is just set up a basic number line that would represent the position of the particle and we can just kind of model or mimic what's happening to the particle based on the graph that we're given. So it does tell us that the position of the particle is at negative 2 um, at the very beginning or at time 0. So we can start by placing the particle at negative 2 and then we know that the particle is traveling from 0 to 3 seconds um, it's in the negative region, meaning a negative velocity. Negative meaning it moves to the left. And if we identify that it's moving to the left, and we can figure out how far it moved, or its displacement, to the left in those three seconds, then we'll know where it's at at three seconds. So if you pay attention to uh, when it says that the area of the region is 8 from 0 to 3 seconds. So the area of the region is 8 right in here, meaning the time that it traveled from 0 to 3 seconds, it has a total displacement of 8 units to the left. So we can take our particle and we can move it 8 units to the left. and that would end up at negative 10. So now our particle is at negative 10, and then we can trace what's happening next. Next you can identify that we have a positive velocity, which means our particle is going to move to the right. So in this region right here, our particle is moving to the right, and we can recognize in the problem that the area of this region, it tells us, is 3. So from 3 to 5 seconds, the particle moves to the right 3 units. And now the particle is at negative 7. Finally, from 5 to 6 seconds, we're given that the area of that region is 2. So we also know, since the velocity graph tells us we're in the negative region, we're going to be moving back to the left again. So our particle is moving two units back to the left. So here we are at negative seven, but we're going to be going back to the left two units, and we're now at negative nine. Hopefully after setting up this visual for yourself of where and how the particle traveled, you could easily answer part A and part B. In part A, when it asks you to find both the time and position where the particle is farthest to the left, it's clear that the particle is farthest to the left at negative 10, which occurred at 3 seconds. So that's the answer to part A. Part B, how many times did the particle pass through or is at negative 8? Well, Looking again at this visual, find a negative 8 and see how many times the particle passed through it. One, two, three times. There were three instances where the particle was at position negative 8. Since we know that type of visual logic is not enough justification on the AP exam, here's the work you would want to show to justify your answer for part A, um, and then I'll do the same for part B. In part A, if we represent s of t as the position at time t, uh, then s of 3, which is one of the points where our velocity is at 0, so meaning the particle is going to change direction, um, we can identify that from the starting position, negative 2, and then adding in the displacement that would occur from the 0 to 3 seconds, we would have negative 2 plus the integral from 0 to 3, meaning the change in position from 0 to 3 seconds of the velocity. 
And that integral, a.k.a. the area under the, the curve, was given to us as negative 8. So we're just going to add negative 2 plus negative 8. And that gives us the total displacement of the particle. It moved to negative 10. Doing the same thing for S of 6, or the position after 6 seconds, we're going to add the initial position, negative 2, to the integral, or change in position from 0 to 6 seconds. I'm forgetting my DTs, oops. And that was also given to us as the area under the curve. So we're going to add negative 2, and then, again, the negative 8 from 0 to 3 seconds. And then, from the 3 to 5 seconds, we were given a displacement of 3. And then, from the 5 to 6 seconds, the particle had a displacement of 2, again, to the left, so negative 2. And this all together leaves us at that final position of negative 9, which we demonstrated on my little number line. And so you can see that negative 10 is the position farthest to the left, which occurred at 3 seconds. So that would be the justification to get your points on the AP exam. Part B of this problem really uses the ideas of the intermediate value theorem, which in elementary terms is laid out for you here as if we have two points connected by a continuous curve, which is the key, it has to be continuous, where one point is below the line depicted and one point is above the line depicted, then naturally if our curve is continuous, it's got to cross that line at least once. And in fact, our curve can cross the line more than once, multiple times in fact. And this is the idea when it's asking you um, how many times does the particle reach negative 8? Well, we're going to discuss that in a moment. The key to earning your points in Part B on the AP exam is by demonstrating your understanding that the curve is continuous and is also... Um, monotonically moving, meaning it is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing over the specific intervals. So, as you can see, the position at 0 and at 3 are given, and so between 0 and 3, the particle travels from negative 2 to negative 10 to the left, meaning it must pass through negative 8 by the intermediate value theorem. So this is one time where it must pass through negative 8 by the intermediate value theorem. And then again, if we look at the interval from 3 to 5, our particle is moving to the right from negative 10 to negative 7. And by the intermediate value theorem, since our function is continuous, moving continuously and monotonically, strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, so it's moving continuously to the right from negative 7 to negative 10, which means, again, it must pass through negative 8. And then looking at our position from 5 to 6 seconds, it travels from negative 7 to negative 9, moving to the left, so it must pass through negative 8 by the intermediate value theorem. So there was three occurrences where the particle was at negative 8. So you would need to state that this is all true and possible by the intermediate value theorem. So I'll just put IVT. It passes through negative 8 three times. Part C is just testing your understanding of this graph of velocity. So when it's asking you what's happening from 2 to 3 seconds, you notice that the particle is approaching 0. So since the particle's velocity is approaching 0, that means it's slowing down. So you would simply earn one point for identifying that the particle's velocity is getting closer to zero, a.k.a. slowing down. So the speed of the particle would be decreasing. Lastly, for part D, we know the acceleration is going to be negative 
wherever the velocity is decreasing, because remember, the derivative of velocity gives us the acceleration. So if we identify where the derivative is negative, that's where the velocity would be decreasing. So identifying where it's decreasing from negative, or excuse me, from 0 to 1, and then from 4 to 6, those are the intervals where the acceleration is negative. So from 0 to 1, and from 4 to 6. And that concludes the solutions to the 2008 FRQ number 4. I hope this helped. I'll see you in class.